Okay, we'll start with the approval of minutes. Did everybody get a chance to go through the minutes? Yes. Were there any changes or? Okay. I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll second that. Okay. Approval of minutes. Okay, so moved. Our first, our first item is a resolution for Commissioner Greg Burnett. Okay, so do we read the whole thing now? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Please. Thank you. Okay. Are, would you like to stand, or are you are you comfortable where you are? <laughs> <laughs> A resolution of the Recreation and Parks Commission of the City of Santa Maria recognizing Greg Burtnett for his service on the Recreation and Parks Commission. Revolution num or resolution number 2019-02. Whereas Commissioner Burnett joined the Recreation and Parks Commission on September 13th, 2016, and whereas Commissioner Burnett, Burnett helped guide the Recreation and Parks Commission and Department's efforts in meeting the leisure needs of the Santa Maria community by providing meaning, meaningful input, and whereas during Commissioner Bartnet service, significant programs, services, and projects were undertaken, including the reconstruction of historic Buena Vista Park, expansion of the safe and strong after school recreation program, creating options for sports field use and development, and many more. And whereas Commissioner Burtnett made it a point to be present at department events representing the commission and took the time to engage department staff on issues facing them in the field. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the Recreation and Parks Commission of the City of Santa Maria, Greg Burtnett is recognized for his service on the Recreation and Parks Commission. The Recreation and Parks Commission and the department wish Greg and his family many years of enjoyment in the city parks and recreation areas. It was passed and adopted at a regular meeting of the City of Santa Maria Recreation and Parks Commission held this day 12th day of March, 2019. Okay, we have to get picture photo op. <laughs> Mr. Smitherman has to get in his spot. the opportunity uh, for all too short a time to work with the Recreation and Parks Commission and am very thankful for you all having taught me and, and helped me understand our city better and thank you for the opportunity to serve and I have no intention of uh, stop serving we will find other avenues and uh, hope to continue to make Santa Maria a great place to live Thank you, Mr. Posada, and thank each of you for being co-commissioners with me and also for Dennis and Cindy. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the record, you will need a motion. A point, did we take roll call before? We uh, I think it was taken silently okay. by, uh, by uh, Just, Sheila, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Thank you. But we will need a motion for Commissioner Burtnett's resolution. Do we have a motion? I move to approve the resolution. I second. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> it's Unanimous. been wonderful serving with you, um, Commissioner Burtnett. Um, thank you for um, your enthusiasm and your joy and dedication to um, the city of Santa Maria and specifically the recreation and parks. Um, and we look forward to seeing you out in the community and, and joining your side in, in continuing the work. So thank you. Thank you. We'll miss you. You don't have to leave. You can stay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our next order of business is a recognition resolution for Jesse Glu I'm sorry. Glu yes. Glu yes. Uh, I'll read it and then we can talk about who Jesse was. 
A resolution of the Recreation and Parks Commission of the City of Santa Maria, California, recognizing Jesse Donald Gluyas for his dedicated service to the City of Santa Maria. Resolution number 2019-03. Whereas Jesse Donald Gluyas became a Recreation and Parks Department volunteer in January of 2018. And whereas Jesse Don Donald Gluyas contributed 600 hours of community service. 600. <laughs> whereas Jesse Donald Gluyas dedicated his time almost daily to the beautification of city parks. And whereas Jesse Donald Gluyas commitment and eagerness to volunteer on a regular basis exemplified what an extraordinary asset he was to the Recreation and Parks team. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the Recreation and Parks Commission of the City of Santa Maria, Jesse Donald Gluyas is recognized for his hours of dedicated service to the City of Santa Maria, the Recreation and Parks Department, and the community. The Recreation and Parks Commission and Department wish his family condolences on the passing of their beloved son, grandson, brother, and loved one. This will be passed and adopted today. Is there anyone that wants to speak about, you know, the contributions he made to our... I, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'll take David Rodriguez if you'd like to come up. David is our community outreach yes. coordinator. He handles our volunteers. Hello, commissioners. Is this on? Yes. Okay. So, Jesse Donald Gluyas. Uh, I first spoke to Jesse December 2017. Uh, he let me know he had just moved to the city of Santa Maria and he was looking to be of service. Um, he spoke about his extensive service to other cities um, in the state. And when he told me about you know, his qualifications, I felt we needed to bring him on board. So January 2018, we finally registered him as a volunteer and I never expected the level of service that he would bring to our department. One year later, 600 hours of community service, almost daily um, maintenance of our city parks, <laughs> interacting with our parks crews, the first to sign up for our special events. Um, I can't think of anybody who would reply to an email faster than Jesse Donald Gluyas. <laughs> and so he will be, you know, he's definitely missed. Um, I know that it wasn't just our department that he was so involved with. He was always um, reaching out to other departments as well. The fire department has um, carried out their own um, recognition efforts for him. And um, I want to, um, you know, tell his family here with us today, um, thank you. Thank you for, for Jesse. And um, would, would you like to come up and say anything regarding Jesse? Hi, I'm Donna Lewis. I'm Jesse's grandmother. Um, we always tried to get Jesse to come and do things with our family. You know, we, would you come to dinner? His uncle and aunt were always inviting him to dinner, and he'd say, oh, I can't come, I'm busy. And I tried to get him to come down to Solvang, where we lived, and he just couldn't come. But he was busy. We thought he didn't <laughs> want to be with us, but he was busy. <laughs> but um, he really enjoyed what he did. He, he really, really did. And, I know he would be so pleased if he was here now, and um, unfortunately that isn't the case, but thank you very much for all that you've done for him. And he loves Santa Marie. He was only here about a year and a half, but he fell in love, so thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, we will need a motion. Yes. Uh, I so move. A second. Great. All, mm, all those. It's all unanimous? Yes. yes. Thank I, you. Thank you. Okay. And thank you. Santa Maria is definitely a better place because of Jesse. 
Thank you so much. Unbelievable. Okay. So, sorry, just wanted to mention, um, we as a department wanted to oh, honor right. his, um, his contribution and his love for our city parks. And so we did have um, a Tree of Life um, certificate that we'd like to donate to his family so that you can pick a park and a tree that you'd like to honor him with. And um, once that's planted, please let us know so that we can also honor him and know where, where it's at. So. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners, for uh, recognizing Jesse. It was a it was a sad moment. I got emails from uh, several of our staff members uh, about his involvement. Uh, he was involved in our Special Olympics program, and uh, my wife was trying to get him involved in our Action Club. Uh, you know that meets out at Miami Center. So it was a very uh, sad loss for the department and, and our program area. So we again express our condolences to the family and, and thank them <coughs> very much for letting him participate in as a volunteer um, you know it, it, it was a sad moment when we heard that news so thank you for recognizing him thank you, thank you. Okay, next we have Commission committee appointments thank you commissioners how are everybody uh, your new commissioner was unable to be here tonight he had a prior uh, appointment in, in uh, Los Angeles but he will be here at the next meeting uh, we put this on the agenda because there are committees that you, uh, some of you can go ahead and, and uh, move on to, or uh, it can be, you're not here, so you're going to get appointed to with which committees the rest of us want you to be appointed to. <laughs> I, I don't think Mr. Lee is, uh, is, would be opposed to helping out in any commi co commission committee. But in any case, it's up to you if you would like to do that tonight. If not, we can delay it for the next meeting and have him here uh, to pick through the, the, the uh, committees with you. You know, this is already March. I'm, I don't know, I'm just thinking we should probably get on with it. Yeah, there are some things coming up that we would like to uh, move on uh, on the committees, uh, specifically on the park development. You know, we have some grants that have to yeah. get done, mm -hmm. so we would like to be able to do that as much as possible. So to that end, uh, you have your list, and mm -hmm. uh, every you know everybody here now is a tenured commissioner, so uh, you can uh, work down the list and we can decide where you, where you would like to be assigned. Well, co um, Chair, I'd like to remain as a playing board member um, just to continue my role as chair. Would it be easier to say, to ask if, if everyone wants to stay on the committees that they've been serving on? Or is there some, you know, does somebody want to move around? Because I'm happy with my committees, I'm just saying. Does everyone know where they're assigned? Yeah. Is, Right, a refresher is always nice. <laughs> yeah, like, I know I'm on the park development. Just for the record, if we could have them said out loud. Yes. So, shall you run down the list just in case so we yep. can yes. say? I think that's a good idea. So we have the play board member, which uh, Commissioner Anda is, would like to continue on. Um, we have the art committee, which uh, worked on the art master plan, uh, plan, which will be going to the council uh, in the next month or so. As soon as we can get Dennis to finish wrapping it up and put it on the agenda. It's all on him. And that was Commissioner Henderson and, and, and Commissioner mm -hmm. Kerry. The All-America City Committee was kind of in limbo. Uh, so it's on hiatus at this point, so we're not making any appointments to that. Excuse me, can't turn the page here. Um, Downtown specific plan? Yes, the downtown specific plan was the next page. And um, I believe that was Commissioner Anda and Commissioner... Just myself. Just you? You were the one? The only one? And then uh, the Community Partnerships Committee. My page is blank here. Do we, who was on community partnership, Sheila? Do you all remember? I think it was Burnett and... Burnett. 
I think it was. Yeah, I think it was you and, and Commissioner Burtnett. Uh, so we have one opening there if Commissioner uh, Batterson would like to continue on community partnerships. Okay. Uh, park Development Committee. Uh, this one's going to be busy as we have park yeah. things moving ahead. And uh, um, I believe that was Commissioner Batterson and Commissioner Burtnett also. Uh, they I was on, I, I'm on that. Were you on that one? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Carey and Commissioner Batterson. And then uh, budget committee. That's the one everyone wants to be on. Everybody wants to be on the budget committee. Dennis <laughs> uh, is so fun. That was Commissioner Burtnett and. Was it Anne? And no, and I thought it was. I was, but I. Was it I'm you? I'm not sure if I was. Laura? Too long. I don't know. It, right as it stands right now, you have two. I have two. You have two. Um, Ileana has two, so I well, guess the new, what about the new commission? Well, I think everybody gets two. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have ten spots, so it looks like I win. <laughs> Budget committee. Lucky girl. Budget. <laughs> well, if somebody else wants to serve on the downtown committee, I'd be happy. Their meetings are, you, are just yeah. Like, are you interested in a change? Uh, sure, I will. Is that to budget? Yeah. Do if you, you're interested in the downtown. I'm about equally interested, um, but I'm happy to serve in any way that um, is necessary. I love budget talks. So, yeah, I'm, I'm open to a change. Well, we could have Commissioner Henderson and Commissioner Onda on budget. We could both do it. Okay. There we go. <laughs> and then for downtown, I'm not really sure where that's going to go yet, so we may want to leave that one kind of open. Maybe that's something that Commissioner Lee would be interested in. Uh, we can see where that goes. Okay. So what I have right now is Budget Committee uh, Henderson and Onda, Park Development uh, Batterson and Carey. Community Partnership, we had a, a, an opening uh, and, uh, sorry I didn't write that down. Is that uh, Commissioner Batterson? Play Board members, Commissioner Onda. Arts Committee. Mm -hmm. Carrie and Henderson, correct? Oh, and that leaves downtown open. Uh, great. Do I need to go over that again, or has everybody got that one? Got it. Got it. Okay. So we'll we'll print that out and we'll send it out. And okay. if uh, the chair gets the pleasure of making appointments, so if those are your appointments, so moved. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, old business. Or new. New business grant updates. What? New business. New business. First. Oh, Cindy. I'm sorry. I was not paying attention. Grant updates. New business. Hi, Cindy. With Cindy Hoskins and Dennis. Hi, Commissioners. Cindy, I'll be going over a series of grants not only uh, that are pending, um, some that have been recently submitted, and, and then some are wrapping up as well. So Cindy's going to start with some uh, projects that we've been working on lately. Put my eyes on, ladies. <laughs> okay, so back in February, we submitted to the National Resource Agency's uh, Prop 68 a round of their monies that are coming out for two projects. Um, basically, these were concept proposals. They weren't actual full, complete applications. It was just to get our requests for our ideas out there. One was for one point, what was it, 1.8 million for the Santa Maria Sports Complex, which is for the basically soccer fields over on the 12-acre site located next to the cemetery. And then the other was for the Enos Ranch Park and Cultural Center, which is $4.9 million. And that is for about six-acre park and a 10,000-square-foot um, cultural center over there, kind of by the Costco Enos Ranch area. So I'm thinking, if I remember correctly, the time frame on that is probably about another month. We hope to hear back, hopefully by the end of this month, I believe, um, as to whether we're going to be invited to go ahead and move forward with the formal proposals. So we're waiting on those. Um, back in September, we submitted to California State Parks the Habitat Conservation Fund for our Ranch to River Outdoor Nature Experience Program, which is basically similar to the past grant we did with them um, for field trips and different natural, natural resource type 
um, outdoor education programs over at Los Flores Ranch. So this year we specifically asked for uh, monies to go towards third through fifth graders to continue the field trip experience. And then we added um, basic public community walks over at Santa Maria River Trails to see if we can get some more people out there. So I think we're hearing by the end of March, I think that was the last email I got on that. Um, so hopefully we get, you know, that was a $39,000 grant. So hopefully we get approved for that, which would be great. Um, you probably heard that we did get um, CDBG committee approval to move forward on the pool renovation project. Yeah. So that's just going to council on that April, I believe. It's probably coming up. So we're waiting to hear on that. But we're a top priority. So I'm looking forward to getting that one approved. Um, I worked with Ryan Heath on a Major League Baseball $50,000 grant to see if we could get Seamus Park renovated into um, be able to play Little League. It's a really highly competitive grant through, I think it's called Scott's, my glasses on Scott's Baseball Field for your community grant. It's really competitive, but we thought, what the heck, it was like a four-page grant, so we sent it in to see what we could come up with. So that might be something that we can look forward to as well. Um, and then Alex went March 1st to another round of monies that are coming up for Prop 68 through the Statewide Park Development and Community Revitaliz Revitalization Program. That's not going to be due until August 5th. So depending how we do with these other two grants that we just submitted to the resource agency, we might be repackaging them to see if we can get those approved through that, that set of monies, as well as some of the other ideas that you guys had approved a while back in terms of um, projects that are priority in the department. And we have some ones that are open right now. We do. Uh, we're currently working on completing the CAL FIRE grant. If you remember, this is a about a two and a half year grant now uh, that constituted uh, counting all of our city trees in the city of Santa Maria. So that inventory is now complete. Um, we have data uh, showing where every tree is currently and, and those that are missing. Um, so we do have quite a, a bit of vacancy. So we're working on um, replanting those trees, which was also part of the grant. We have 500 trees to plant. And to date, we're, we're at about 200. Uh, so we have until uh, spring of next year to complete 300 tree plantings. So um, keep an eye open for new trees in your neighborhood. Let us know if you see a vacancy somewhere. Um, but we should have all those listed at the, in the inventory. Uh, and then the next one, we just uh, found out that we uh, received a grant for bus passes. Uh, working with Austin O'Dell and our Santa Maria Area Transit, our, our bus system, uh, we wrote a grant to force team bus passes for, for the year. Mm -hmm. So originally asking for 18000 and as of this morning, they've uh, more than doubled our funding for, to over 40000 wow. So we'll have access to more than 1,000 youth bus passes for the summer. So if you know anyone who needs a bus pass, um, please let us know and come visit the youth center. We'll have those available. Yeah. Um, and that we'll be packaging that as a, a teen adventure pass to visit many of our city's facilities um, that offer teen activities and programs, including uh, nonprofits like the Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA and uh, different different activity areas for teens to visit. They can really go anywhere on the bus with this pass, but that's how we're going to market it. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and those are the ones that we have currently. Oh, and then uh, robotics. Um, our robotics program is in its fourth year now, and we've been sure tenth year. <laughs> Oh my goodness, time flies and you're having fun. Um, they uh, have been re received a $50,000 grant. They uh, have wow. no problem spending it through the year. Uh, and they're off to their first competition in just a couple weeks. So we're excited about that as well. So um, they've, they've varied in, in placing at these events and um, some really great years and some pretty good years. So we'll see how they do, but we'll let you all know. Wow. And that's it for the grants. That's it, huh? That's Thank it. you. Any comments? Thank you. That's a, that's a big list, um, and I love that. I mean, that's a big list, but you still go after those that are super competitive. Um, thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Why not us? Anybody? Um, you were saying we're replanting 500 trees. <coughs> 
Right. Does that include any of those pine trees on Miller that uh, in the you know right next? To sure. I, the vacancies. Um, there is a specific area we, we, we're trying to prioritize based on the grant regulations. Uh, so the 51% of our trees have to be in, in a certain area. So if there's trees available, tree spaces available after those are complete, then we would look at, at those additional areas and, and um, work with our parks crew to determine priority on, on placement. But 51% for the grant have to go more to the northeast, I'm sorry, northwest portion of town. Because the uh, part of the grant was based on the agriculture in the area, and the and the air quality, mm -hmm. um, so those those trees will help mitigate any kind of air quality issues, oh, whether because of the agriculture or, or um, dirt in the air and things like that. Are, do you know uh, if they're going to be cutting those trees down? Very soon or I, I do know that they will be cutting them down. I don't have the timeline. I, I just wondered with the wind if, if if they're a hazard now that they're the ones that are right now the uh, the uh, redwoods are the ones that have you know are deceased. Yeah. And so um, there's no danger of them falling at this point in time, uh, but they are going to be removed and probably be this summer sometime. Um, we'll get a a replenishment of cash for tree work in July. And then we'll be able to start looking at some of those removals and replacements. Can I, can I just a quick question? Do those trees have to be planted by for the grant guidelines by staff, or is that something where volunteers could come in and? Plant I think them? it's volunteers can be used. Volunteers, yeah. There is a certain level uh, that volu we will be using volunteer f labor to do that, um, but we also were given some funding for um, staff to do that as well. So it's we have to have a match. And part of it is volunteer we're time. we're getting some requests for church groups that want to come in and do some stuff. So. Absolutely. Cool. Sure. Okay. Is that it? I'll talk to David. Thank you. Okay. Old business. Not seeing anything. Okay. Informational reports. Budget update. Okay. Um, it currently, with 66.69% uh, of the year complete, we're under budget. 9.37 percent wow. um, we do anticipate that to be dwindling almost immediately as we're now getting ready for summer um, we're working on lifeguard hires right now swim instructor hires and then our summer rec leader programs as well as the teen internship program so um, most of that will will you'll start to see that that uh, negative number change as we get closer to summer but we we are anticipating to to be at zero by the end of the year. Okay, our uh, noteworthy activities, February report. So you have the report enclosed in your packet, as usual. Busy month, even though yeah. it's our slow time. So, you know, go figure. Uh, I, I think probably the, the, the most important things that I like to point out on the report is that um, the program areas continue to, to try to create programs that are going to be attracting, you know, the young people, the youth, and trying to stay in line with what the task force guidelines have been. And so, well, we've been kind of struggling a little bit. I want to thank Dennis and uh, for taking on the uh, the rec division and, and helping them kind of guide them through their their uh, continued operation without a division manager. And then the supervisors, Cindy and Jason, for you know coming up with program ideas. Uh, Cindy trying to find some money to fund those program ideas, but uh, you know she successfully wrapped up the Pepsi Cola contract, which we got our four thousand dollar check today from them. So uh, that was their initial, you know, contribution. Uh, and it's not just that. I mean, that's part of the negotiations, but it's getting the machines installed. You know, mm -hmm. you know, working with the vendor to make sure all those things get out there. So it's. Um, it's been a lot of work. Staff has stepped up to help on both divisions with Jim being gone in parks. Roy and Scott have stepped up to, you know, help out in, in that side uh, too. So it's been, it's been great. So, and as you can see it program wise or report wise, we haven't missed a beat really. So no. uh, if I can go on to director's report, a couple of things. Um, let me back up a little bit to what Cindy was talking about on the grant. So it did go to the state park 
uh, training session, for lack of a better word, uh, down in Santa Clarita last week. And it's very strange that, you know, even though both agencies are under the Department of Natural Resources, their approaches to grants are totally different. So um, the resource agency is basically, as, as Cindy indicated, you turn in a, a letter of intent, basically, and then they tell you whether they want it or not. For state parks, we have to complete the entire application process on paper, in, in paper and submit it. Everything for the resource agency was online. Uh, so it's the state parks hasn't quite moved forward in, in the electronic version of things. Uh, but they are talking about uh, $265 million available in this first cycle. Uh, the projects that we're looking at, uh, besides the two that Cindy mentioned, uh, we're trying to find those projects that kind of tick the boxes in all their, their needs. So um, tomorrow I plan to meet with the planning department to talk about um, the actual soccer complex site at uh, Stoll Road and, uh, and Depot. Um, and the discussion, what the state will allow you to do is actually purchase land and, but if you purchase land through their grant, you also have to develop it with their grant. So you have to be able to move a project through. So um, we are uh, going to meet and talk to the planning people, find out if there's any, from, from the city's planning perspective and the environmental uh, perspective, if there's an opportunity to talk to the property owners about going ahead now and selling us that property and using the state money to purchase it. Uh, from them and then begin development. So that was not expected. Um, but that area, again, ticks the boxes. You know, it's uh, you know, the geographic area, the, you know, the, the income, the, the demographic of the area supports a good application. The need, I think we worked really hard on already. Cindy's already said, we've already really written that grant and when we submitted it to the state the last time for sports fields. So it's just a matter of tweaking it to meet the boxes that, are, that, uh, that this grant application has. Um, we're also looking at a couple of other projects that have some potential out there. The big thing in these projects are community involvement. So uh, Dennis and Cindy and, and David um, Rodriguez will be looking at trying to pull a group together to start talking about these specific community projects that we're, we're uh, looking at funding. Hence the number one item on, um, under item C there was to um, reactivate that committee of community volunteers to step forward and let's start talking about sports fields again. Um, and uh, that's just one component. I mean, there's several other groups that we need to talk with, but we know that group. Uh, I spoke to, um, uh, drawing a blank now, Cynthia Gadenis the other day, and she's interested in continuing uh, to help with that project. So we're going to bring that group back together again and start talking to them about what the community needs are, which we know that what they are, but to at least get them fresh. The state wants you to have been in conversations with groups for a while. So, you know, we know we've talked to them a few years ago. That's really not relevant to them anymore. They want to know where we are now. <laughs> We're hoping to use some of the leisure assessment information to help us out with that when we do our applications. The good thing with the state parks grant is it is not due until August, so that gives us some time to start pulling these community groups together. So. Uh, That'll be one of our, our priorities uh, to do. There are some smaller projects we'll be looking at. Um, we talked about uh, working with the school district, uh, which is another. It's very odd in the state grant for the resource agency. They really weren't looking at partnerships with schools. State parks are a little bit more open to school partnerships. So we're looking at how that might fit into the Kunst uh, community track program that they want to do. They want to build a track there. Um, that may be something that, that we're able to partner with them. Uh, there's some other minor, the revitalization part of it is what the grant is about. So they're perfectly willing to help us reduce our backlog of capital projects. Prescott Park is one of the larger ones. Um, we're also looking at another program through uh, 
through PG&E to fund uh, some park improvements that will save water and gas and electric costs. So there's some other opportunities out there that uh, we're working on. So amazingly, there's a lot of money out there. We're just trying to put our little hand out and see how much of it we can get. Uh, but we're working on that and staff's taking that on uh, pretty diligently. The other funding issue is Measure U. Last week at the council meeting, the council approved a, a plan that uh, will move forward to the budget, uh, the mid-year budget cycle, which starts uh, in July. So probably sometime in the May timeframe, uh, we'll be preparing budget items. So uh, Dennis will correct me if I'm wrong, but in a nutshell, what we did is our youth programs at current levels uh, are safe, they're funded. And those funds will come out of the Measure U funds. Um, the Ranger program is also funded with the addition of uh, a full-time Ranger and two positions that were funded by the HEAP grant, which is the homeless grant, will also remain. Those were due to expire this year. So uh, they'll continue funding. Did I miss anything there? Yeah. Yeah, so those are the key things. Um, we were allowed about r r roughly the, the, the money that we were able to keep in our budget was that $1 million reduction that we were asked to make back in January of the year. So that came right off the top of Measure U. Then we were allowed another $260,000, $250,000 for program expansion. Um, we uh, proposed in the budget to uh, buy two, two new vehicles, two vans to provide uh, transportation uh, to youth to activities. The mayor would like to see us get kids out of town and out to other areas and kind of do some experiences. So we're looking, um, the, the problem with the city is, is that while that's approved and it'll get approved in July, we won't be ready for this summer. Uh, so we're really talking next summer or uh, the teen treks program that we have run over the summer that may expand into the fall uh, school year. Uh, you know, nothing is fast for us, especially when it comes to buying things. So um, the idea is that we would have vehicles available. The bus token thing, the bus pass thing was, for me, I, w I didn't even know about it, so I'm sure it was something that you know will help some kids get around the community, but it still doesn't get them out of town. Um, there was also um, um, program funding for, what else did we do? Uh, to work with additional for the Mayor's Youth Task Force. Yes. Um, so there's a full-time position uh, requested that would work basically take the role Teresa was playing with the task force, but that would be their only job, would be working with Eddie uh, and uh, actually developing a team that would be the outreach team. We just hired a 32-hour um, a week uh, facility specialist who came to us from uh, Miami. Miami Rec Recreation Parks. Yeah, and she was an outreach person there, worked with a lot of at-risk <coughs> youth. Uh, I can only describe her as a, a ball of energy, so uh, she'll be out there and very uh, interested in the program. Uh, Ron Rodriguez is here uh, trying to wrap up the plan for them to proceed with, and so uh, at the next commission meeting, uh, we'll hope to be able to present that plan to you and kind of get an idea of where he's coming from. Um, and uh, the idea was to create a roadmap so that when we did hire this position, there'd already be a roadmap in place and they could immediately start working on those things. So, um, you know, we're excited about that. Um, yeah, so things are moving, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a exciting time, you know, right now for all of us. I think there's a lot of things going on. Um, we still have a couple of manager positions that we need to hire and get some people on board to help uh, with the overall program supervision and things. But hopefully that'll happen in July, too. We'll see. We're not quite sure yet. I'm waiting to hear. Um, yeah, I think that was it on there. And then uh, 
Any questions on funding or anything like that? Yes, ma'am. I have a, just a question about the 32-hour position, that the, the ball of fire. What was her name? Her name is Megan Diaz. Diaz. And was she the one that was originally thought to be like a counterpart to Eddie? Yes. Like, okay. In this Great. position, yes. Okay. Yeah. Could, she, could we meet her? Could she come? I love sure. it when... When does she actually start? Monday. Monday. She'll start in that position on Monday. Okay. So, sure, yes, that would be fine. We could have her come to the next meeting. Great. That'll give her some time, too, to kind of see where she wants to come from. Right. And we still, uh, you know, to be frank with you, we, we still are trying to figure out exactly how we're going to make that team work. Uh, I'm hoping that Ron's plan has some ideas for us that we can use. So He's been keeping it secret, so I don't really know what it, what it <laughs> says yet. Anything right. else? <clears throat> so then, uh, did we hand these out, Sheila? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this might be, again, so this is the plan that was ended up coming out of a marketing attempt from the downtown plan. So the idea here is this was sent out to potential developers, and I don't know exactly where, but regionally, to see, to identify places in the downtown that developers might want to look at developing. And if you turn to page number four and look at the picture, number three is Pearlman Park. So, I just wanted you to be aware of that. And this went out without it coming to our department or our department knew that that was coming out? Well, like I, I think I mentioned it at a few meetings that the city was looking at sites downtown. And if you read the little description, they're saying, but well, it's a city park right now. We really would like to keep it as some kind of public space. So if you were a developer and you have an interest in this space, you would bring a project forward that keeps the downtown park theme. Maybe it's a, a plaza. Maybe it's a plaza with retail or something, or 7-Eleven. I don't know. You know so just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Good. So uh, anyway, uh, so it's there, it's out, and uh, certainly I think along those lines we would be involved with some input there. Uh, this is just kind of out there. There's really just kind of casting ideas out there. Um, the other one is across the street from number three was the site of the what they're calling the... Uh, Mixed use. Yeah, so that is moving ahead. They started their demo work, so um, we should see some other construction, infrastructure construction going in yeah, at that location. And that's kind of the hallmark to, to the new downtown. That's really kind of the, the council will approve that project based on it kind of setting the tone for the rest of the area. Um, Was that apartments that mis mi mixed, mixed juice? juice? It's, uh, yes, down, uh, ground floor retail. Uh, I believe there may even be some professional office on second floor and then retail on number three and four? Or apartments. is it three? Apartments. Yeah. apartments. yeah, apartments, I'm sorry. On three and four. Chair. So on the back it says developers wishing to enter a discussion with the city about potential projects. Um, and so if this went out to developers and they had an idea for one of the spaces that was outlined as available or potentially available, is there a committee or who is the city? Planning commission. Planning commission. Yes. Okay, so these ideas would come forward first to planning and then... Where, where they would involve like the park, then they would come to the commission at some okay. point. Either prior to going to planning commission, they wanted to be sure all their ducks are in a row uh, before they go to planning commission I think that would be the normal route okay uh, they don't want to have a project show up and let this commission be anti it you know right. at their meeting okay. so interesting anything else that was it for me okay it was plenty <laughs> Commissioner Kerry, um, real quick before we move on can I talk real quick about the leisure needs assessment Oh, yes. uh, oh we, I'm sorry. Wait, I'm sorry. Sorry okay. to interrupt you. It's okay. So, uh, is, uh, the, I forgot on the action. So, is it all right on the soccer committee to bring those people back out of hiatus? Because it is an action item, because it is your committee. So, if that's okay. Okay. And, yes, absolutely. 
does the commission want to attend those? It's usually, we, the idea was it would be under park development because that's kind of what we're seeking. So the park development people would be the ones we would invite to that meeting. So if you're all okay with that. Commissioner Battleson and I used to okay. attend those meetings. Yeah. Okay, that's it, thanks. Thank you, Dennis, sorry. Thanks, yeah. Alex. Uh, the leisure needs assessment survey, the mailed survey will go out uh, this Friday. They will be mailed out. We did have it translated, the cover letter translated uh, as well. So uh, just keep an eye out for those. Um, I don't think they would mail them to you guys because uh, of your affiliation, but if you do get one, please let us know. Yeah. <clears throat> or yeah. if your family just gets fill it out, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then three weeks after that, we'll start to see the link that I will forward to to you all to share in every way possible, social, me social media, email, um, in any place you can distribute that. And then we do have our, right now, f uh, three community events planned to uh, garner additional intercept surveys, and that's going to be the Kite Festival, Open Streets, and one more. And Oh, thank you. Yeah, the, the Friday night events, downtown Friday nights. And then we are working on uh, two additional days of um, just pop-up style. So hitting specific locations, um, including you know, could be soccer fields, could be a park, could be a grocery store. And, and so we'll continue to work on that and we'll let you know. Uh, so again, be on the lookout for those 3,500 surveys that have gone out or will go out this Friday. Thank you. Great. Chair. Sure. A suggestion since you're doing Friday night um, whenever you are doing it if you want to extend to the day Friday market that happens at the fairgrounds which would be a good population that yes. is a good Friday a uh, good pop-up yeah thank you so. yes great idea I was thinking the Wednesday farmers market where you already pro had that probably on your list already uh, I'm sorry. Actually, that's what I thought you were referring to. No, no, sorry. No. So Fridays, there's a like flea market at the fairgrounds. At the fairgrounds. Mornings, and Thank there's you. a lot there's of people. A lot of people from like the Manami New Love Depot area. So great. Thank you. And I can I, okay, and can I just ask you? So we are going to have a booth at Open Streets. We, yeah, recreation parks. I believe we. Ha I know we have at least one for the youth center, and then we'll have one for uh, the survey separately. For the survey. Um, and then we'll also have some activities. Our park rangers will be out there uh, right. participating. So yeah, we. Who's gonna? We do we have volunteers working the booth? Just I'm probably. Sure. For this, uh, for the open youth streets. center, oh, for open streets yeah. for the survey. Yes. Um, we have David and and one other staff person. Oh, okay. They're bilingual, so we. Perfect. We're looking for someone that can cover as many bases as we can. Um, so they'll be out there. Uh, so if you want to volunteer, you'd be more than happy to have you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I know. Well, I hadn't like committed anywhere else because I oh. heard Kent had mentioned that we were going to have a booth to do that. So, okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, Commissioner reports. Who I wants to go first? Sure. Um, yesterday, I went to the Santa Barbara County Creative Communities Project, um, the outreach. Um, I wasn't able to attend the whole thing. It was quite long, but it was interesting. Um, they are looking to, I think, kind of combine resources in the county to come up with a general um, arts plan um, and and they were looking for input and this is a long process um, kind of similar to the leisure needs on um, gathering information so that was interesting and I've got contact information um, they've been here before or we've received the packet yeah I sit on the committee for the for the creative communities project it's been a, it has been a very long process so far we're about three and a half years into into right. the process um, and so there is visioning sessions all throughout the county right. we were the first ones um, and then they they have them uh, for the next two to three weeks right. um, so thank you for attending and and it was our, our morning session was rather interesting too so I'll touch base but if you have any questions I'm happy to go through that Great. with you thank you and then um, February 26th um, Rebecca and I met with Ron Rodriguez for the community outreach and um, was just given kind of an update on his process. He's an interim um, person to kind of help 
figure out where the mayor's youth task force is going and Eddie's position and kind of um, guide us going forward. So I look forward to hearing his plan. Um, we shared with him some of our own ideas and kind of talked through some things. So that was interesting. Um, it was it was nice to talk with him. Um, and then March 3rd um, went to um, an open house for Corazón del Pueblo. Um, and it was attended by the mayor and commissioner or um, council member Soto, and it was kind of just a kickoff for their um, organization, and it was fantastic. I was hoping that they would come. They were going to share some information, but they do have an open house um, that coincides with Open Streets mm -hmm. on March 31st, so they will have um, uh, information available, and then their location over on Main will be open for the public too. So that should be interesting and kind of exciting for our community. That's Thank it for me. Um, I met with, as a play chair, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> to kind of discuss um, ongoing um, our makeup of the board, so trying to um, recruit and, and redo that. And then also discussing new opportunities for fundraising um, and just how we can really market play more for the department. Um, and so I encourage all of you to really um, brush up on your play reading and you know visit the website or the Facebook or Instagram page um, to really promote all of the great events that play is putting on for the department. Um, and to really talk about that when we're also talking about um, the Recreation and Parks Department. So, great. Oh, okay. sorry. Oh, and I had something else. We were going to, I still would really like a patch update. I know we're um, going to put that maybe in a spring agenda. So, if we could get a breakdown of before they, they start going yeah, again. They um, just had their first organizational meeting. Mm -hmm. So, they're picking the kids to be their leadership board. And then uh, we'll invite them to come and Great. do an update on last year and then where they plan to go this year. I follow them on Instagram, so I'm, <laughs> I'm a fan. <laughs> so it's, it's so cool to see how many kids are involved yeah. in it, too. I love that. Yeah. Great program. My We're just trying to get out to other schools. Yeah. So that's, I mean, it's mostly Pioneer dominated, but we'd like to really get other schools. I guess they had a pretty good handful of kids from other schools, but, you know, the bulk is still Pioneer. my official business you know last month um, Commissioner Battleson and I did a meeting and we forgot both of us didn't mention it we, we, when we met with the cemetery board oh, yes, which true. yeah about the soccer fields which helped facilitate what's going on. I mean it was already in the works but it was yes. really interesting yeah. to do the that grant was getting yeah. Sent out yeah for that. yeah um, Oh, we went to the city training. I think most of us probably did on the 13th. That was, you know, it's always so interesting. Um, February 26th, our community outreach with Ron Rodriguez. And, um, oh, this is it. The Act of Santa Maria on March 4th, the Transportation Advisory Group. Yes. Which, if you guys don't know about it, just, you know what, rather than, I'm just going to read the, First two lines, because it's, it's it in a nutshell, the project summary. Um, it, okay, it's called Act of Santa Maria. The ATP, which is the group, will facilitate the design and implementation of a connected bicycle and pedestrian network that will provide safe, affordable, and accessible transportation alternatives in Santa Maria. The final plan will promote a more sustainable and equitable community by identifying improvements to safety, mobility, and access while reducing greenhouse gas emissions and improving air quality and public health. So this is what we're doing. Um, it's actually all in anticipation of a huge grant that they're going to be filling out. For, it's a federal state competitive grant application to assist, assist city staff in obtaining funds to implement active transportation projects. So that's what we're working on. And I, it was such a great meeting and it's exciting. All these things that, that are going to come to us eventually, you know, things in the works are just amazing. But um, I, was, I was happy to be there. I'm excited to be part of that group. Yeah, I thank you for going. It was a kind of a last minute notice that we got for that, but you know, I think we had about a week's notice on it. But one of the things that is that is critical in 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 that grant and all the other grants that we've been talking about tonight is the fact that they want community participation, mm -hmm. and they don't just want it 
you know, for the week before the, you know, the grant yeah. application, they want you to have a sustained plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, people are now stepping up to organize these kinds of groups. So, you know, that's, that's the motivation. But certainly, uh, you know, we could look at, like the, the downtown plan had the uh, separated bikeways and pedestrian ways, and you know a lot of those things they can't happen unless there's money coming from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this will be one of those catalyst grants that'll help us move forward on that a lot quicker than we anticipated. Are there ongoing meetings for that then? Yes, um, there's there's actually a schedule. I you know I can send you the link. If you're unable it's, to make any of them, yeah, I'd be happy to step in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be gone for, you know, the next month, so. But I think there's no meetings. It's okay. kind of weird. But, yeah, I will send it to you anyway, cause, and I'll put you on the email. Thank you. And lastly, the uh, uh, State Parks Conference is next week. Next week. Commissioner Kerry will be attending, so expect she'll have a big report for you when she comes back. Can't wait. Uh, we're taking, um, Casey Stone is going, oh, um, uh, David is going, and oh. uh, Jeanette Blanco uh, and myself. Is that it, Sheila? Did I miss somebody? Four? Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. You're going? Oh, five. Oh, five. Oh, yeah, I forgot myself, yeah, okay. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, it should be pretty, pretty uh, neat conference. I've already heard from a few vendors who are gonna be there. I've heard from a few of the people who uh, are gonna be doing some of the sessions, so, yeah, it should be good. I think it'd be interesting if, you know, it's always good to ask how other people are using, maybe active, Mm. I know we've talked about that, so just how they're utilizing it for their marketing um, or other areas than just like registration, so that'd be a good okay. way to do that. Yes. That's okay. another tool for play, too. Yes. We haven't used. <laughs> That's what you really <laughs> Anything else? I'm... Okay, is it okay to move to adjourn? Yes. Yes. Okay, I move to adjourn. <laughs>